when one gets paid. First thing he's have to do is buy himself some new nails. Because he has chewed these ones away over the last two or three rounds. This right there, Luker on the Warlock, up against the Mage. We've talked about this matchup. Lorinda, which one of these two do you think is more favored? <laughs> so which, which Warlock is it? And it has got an Eater of Secrets. It is the Q block. And he is, in fact, teching it against the potential either Control Mages with Ice Block, close out the game early, or against the Secret Mages that try to burn your face down. But uh, it is a Q block. I think it's slight favored anyway for the Warlock. Very slight, slighter than people think. I know you think it's closer, but this Eater in your opening hand changes that inordinately, if that's even a word. Yeah, it is. And in fact, it, the re one of the reasons why it's so good, it's not just, oh, it eats a secret. It's they play Kirin Tor Mage, the secret is out. Goodness gracious, what do I do? Play Eater of Secrets, you get a 3-5. Yep. It challenges the Kirin Tor Mage. Challenges everything. And they have to ping it afterwards. So you eat up their mana in the process. Yeah, it just completely kills their tempo. We've seen time and time again that Counterspell and... Explosive runes basically do the same thing. It's really weird how that works out, but they do. And just getting rid of either or gives you such a massive tempo gain. Possessy fireball, uh, frostbolting this now to stop the four health gain. I think it's mostly to prevent the minion from being on the board when he drops the Kirin mm -hmm. mage because he's l for for a deck that is usually called a tempo mage, it just has zero tempo right now. He's gonna get as much of it as he can with the Kirin mage with counterspell. Um, now, the, the advantage of having a card like Dark Reaper in your deck as a two of for Lucre, I'd like to mention, two Dark Reapers. The advantage of having two copies of it is you're able to not, you, you don't have to use the coin in a spot like this when you need to eat mm -hmm. a secret up. You can actually do it on curve without worrying. So now he's going to get the swing that I'm sure he was looking for. Assuming he wants it now, which he probably does, but he was hoping another secret would be played there. Just worth noticing, something we pointed out a lot, but new people will be here today for the finals is he tapped on turn two because he's, he can afford to because he can draw into all that healing that comes back later. So early in the game, people didn't used to tap in this matchup thinking they were going to die, and actually you're forcing yourself to die by having fewer cards by not tapping in the first place. That Eater of Secrets coming in clutch here. Midi's Valley off the draw is like, wait, where is my secret? <laughs> yes, sir, you are... Oh, the fire's been put out. Don't worry. Everything's fine, sir. <laughs> That's a great flavor. We should have that one. Okay, well, you know when you're in trouble as the mage, when you have to arcane intellect, when you still have other cards in hand. It's okay as a, a pretender Luneth on turn 7 or 8, when you didn't draw it. Sure, I mean, right now the problem is Lucre is guaranteed a Void Lord off of this. He drew the Doom Guard, so bring out your large minions, because this board is never hitting. Possessi is on one and only one line of play. It goes like this, Glyph into Polymorph or a Luneth. Into okay. Infinite Burn. That's where he's headed. Infinite Burn land. And yeah, look at the cube and the... Well, no Dark Pact yet, but hey. I mean, he's played one already. What can you complain about? Hey, I like, you want everything in life. <laughs> <laughs> Never have enough. And that's going to be the Hellfire clearing up the board. Sure, the Void Lord comes down near death, but hey... I just get more prevention of damage coming up, and he's got the double Doom Guard. He can start jamming those for pure damage to close out the game early at this point. It's always amusing to me how amazing Mage look when it goes turn one secret, turn three secret, and how awful it looks when it does three damage in the first five turns. It's like I have all these. It's like when you very first play any card game. It's like I'm going to put all the burn spells in my hand and kill you with them, and you wonder why you never win. It's like they have this two drop that hits you five times. And then it's just one of those things where the minions are more efficient at dishing out damage. But it's not obvious when you very first learn yeah. the game, but you get in this position now, it's like, how would you ever do 27, let alone the 40 that you need to do? Dwight Drake is a nice little card here, but not really necessary. Luker here has to determine whether or not going for Doomguard is, is, is valuable. Because like on paper, you're thinking, okay, I can play it, and it's probably going to pay off, as in I get to repeat damage. But... There's the fringe cases where you just get roadblocked by a random glyph and then suddenly you don't have, like you discarded the second Doom Guard and the cube and then you can't come back. So the safest line is obviously the one that he's taken now and I, I really appreciate him identifying it. No need to take a risk with the, with yeah. the Doom Guard at the moment. There was an option there to go face for three and just cube your Void Lord now, um, putting up three, one, three taunts which are in the way and then just your cube can do either damage or generate another one later. Sort of very long-term plan with your cube. 
Cole, the Minari sets up a lethal as the first Doom Guard will be brought out and the second one will follow suit immediately afterwards. Nice. So, let's go to Minari. Probably the easiest way to close out the game against the mage here. Yep, you've got to stop. You've got to stop them hitting you for three. I think you're thinking about the number 13 right now. I guess 15 is the most. Oh, nine mana, so 12 is the most they can do. You've just got to stop. Uh, uh, you're good. So he's just going to try to close out the game with the single Doom Guard instead of waiting for the two of them. Well, this allows him to make a trade. It plays around Potion of Polymorph, I guess. Yeah. As he doesn't have to play the second Doom Guard from hand later on. Sometimes when you're miles in front, you just see a line that works, and that's that'll do. 100% to 100%, however you cut it. Again, no need to really worry about not being able to close the game. And Luca looks like 2 one ahead. Well, he's looked like it for a while. It's already in my book, but... It's already in your book? Yeah, yeah. That was quick. Yeah, it's been there for about three turns. <laughs> the Book of Prophecies by Lorinda. Oh, one of the quality, one of the games at Copa. So what I do is I look through the bits where I've had to cross out the result. It reminds me of the good games. Oh, and fair enough. So one of the games at Copa was actually crossed out all three games. <laughs> the guy lost 3-0 after looking like he should win 3-0. And now Possessi hoping that some kind of glyph into Tome into Ice Block Miracle with a Frostbolt lets him catch up, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen, and that's going to be the Pyroblast to rule them all, the Sudoku having been committed. And again, the Eater of Secrets doesn't seem like much, but it played a key role in the game. It's It was a swing turn, obviously. It was going to be a swing turn.